it's me, Lou. I'm back again to tell you the final part of my story. But first of all, do you remember what happened in the previous part? Well, in the last episode, things between Mark and I were really awkward. He knew that my parents got a divorce, but hadn't even texted me once. In that very difficult time, the only person who was really there for me was Will. He comforted my dad and offered to help him start a new business. This made me look at Will in a whole new light. Then, our ceremony along with a big photo shoot arrived, and a terrible incident happened to me. Aaliyah mocked me and pushed me into the pool! Will saved me this time, and then I realized that maybe it was Will who had saved me the last time too. Will led me to the parking lot, and his hand felt so warm in mine, I started to feel butterflies in my stomach. He'd helped my dad, and now he'd helped me. He was really going above and beyond. He drove me home, and that's when I decided to ask him if he was the person who'd broken the lock that night and rescued me. He just shook his head, so I said, But the cufflink I found, it looks exactly like yours. Then he said, Oh, probably just a coincidence. I decided to leave it after that. Even though he denied it, I still had a hunch it was him. Will dropped me off and came in to make sure I was okay. He offered to stay with me until Naomi got home, but I told him I'd be okay. After he left and I heard his car drive off, I suddenly felt so empty inside. Everything was silent, and I just lay there holding the cufflink that I kept under my pillow and fell asleep. A few days later, while I was sitting at home watching movies, I received a package. Inside was a wedding invitation from Jeremy, and it was for me and Naomi. I couldn't believe he'd moved on so quickly. I was even more surprised to learn that his bride was some model from Naomi's agency. I heard Naomi said that this girl was a real show-off. When Naomi got home, I showed her the invitation and her face fell. She immediately ripped it up and said there was no way on earth she'd attend that traitor's wedding. I told her I wouldn't go either then, but she said I had to because I was Mark's girlfriend and Mark was Jeremy's best friend. Was I, though? What was even going on with me and Mark? Anyway, I went to the wedding, and it was crazy. There were peacocks at the entrance, and everyone said they'd spent millions of dollars on flowers. They'd even had sculptures made of them both. It was insane. And the bride changed her dress five times. Obviously, I sat next to Mark, and Will was opposite me. Every time I looked up, Will would look away, but I could tell he'd been looking at me. I caught myself looking at him a lot, and I didn't really understand it, but it just made me feel warm and safe being near Will. I still felt sorry for Naomi, though. Watching Jeremy and his bride share their vows made me really touched. I held Mark's hand and said, Isn't it beautiful? And all he said was, Yeah. Mark's indifferent reply took the wind out of my sails. But when I looked over at Will, he was smiling sweetly at Jeremy and his bride. I suddenly felt a bit sad and couldn't take my eyes off of him. But then I realized Will could see me looking at him. Oops. Afterwards, Jeremy and his wife came to toast our table. They actually made quite a cute couple. But when the bride realized Naomi wasn't here, she got quite upset and started crying. She was obviously a bit of a drama queen, as she said, Everyone should be here to celebrate me! This is my day! I just laughed and couldn't say anything. After the wedding ended, I said goodbye to everyone and left. Suddenly, we were all grown up, and our carefree student days were over. Who knew what the future held for us? After graduation, I started working for Will's startup company. I thought it was the best way I could do to repay him for how he helped my dad. Pretty soon, we were hanging out a lot, and even though he'd always been caring, he'd never been so warm and friendly to me before. I felt so comfortable around him. One morning, I decided to take the day off work and go shopping with Naomi. We saw Patek Philippe's new watch collection, and it immediately made me think about Will. I decided to buy him one to thank him for everything. When I got home, I texted Will and asked if he wanted to come for dinner on the weekend so I could give the watch to him. I was so excited when he said yes. As for things with Mark, it was just getting worse and worse. 
He was busy all the time and often away on business trips, so I barely saw him, and it made me feel really sad. Not just once did I ask myself if our love story would have a future. Then one morning, I received a message from him saying, I have something to tell you. Let's have dinner tonight. I'll pick you up at 7.30. Apparently, he asked me out on a date, but somehow, I had a bad feeling. His tone was quite cold. Had something happened? That night, I put on my favorite dress and waited for him. He picked me up on time and took me to a very fancy restaurant. At first, we just caught up and spoke about normal things. Then, as we neared the end of the dinner, he said he needed to tell me something important. That feeling of anxiety washed over me again. I was shaking and sweating and just wanted him to spit it out. He took a deep breath. Then he said, Lou, this is really hard for me to say, but my parents have found me a fiancé. She's great, and she will support my family business. I tried to tell them I'm with you, but they won't accept it. So, I'll get married next month. I'm sorry. I was so shocked. I couldn't even say anything. I'd been the biggest idiot. This whole time, everything was laid out right in front of me. Ever since he'd agreed to the blind date, he'd been acting so weird towards me. Like the time at the pool where he just watched me struggle. How had I been so blind to this? Mark didn't care about me. He didn't love me. All he cared about was having a girl on his arm who would add to his image as a successful businessman and, of course, could support his family business. I thought I'd feel worse than I did, but I actually felt relieved. I said to him, You know what? You don't deserve me. We're over. Then I got up and left. I was disappointed, but I deserved so much better. Mark ran after me and offered to take me home, but I could get myself home. I didn't need him anymore. I didn't sleep a wink that night. I just lay there thinking about Mark and Will and all our friends. I still had dinner with Will at the weekend, and I didn't want to cancel it. Even though I didn't feel good, I knew Will would find a way to cheer me up like he always did. The weekend rolled around, and Will and I met at a restaurant near my house. He was carrying a bouquet of flowers, and I was surprised, but happy. You see, I knew he'd cheer me up. After we finished eating, I gave Will the watch. He wouldn't accept it, though, and even got a bit angry, saying, Why would you buy me such an expensive gift? You don't owe me anything, Lou. We're friends, and friends help each other out. I can't accept this. Then, before I could say anything, he said, And anyway, I wanted to help your dad because I'm looking to invest in the restaurant industry. So please, stop thanking me. Then he pushed the gift box back towards me. Will, please. I bought this for you because you're my friend and I care about you. And it made me think of you. If you're my friend, you'll take it. He rolled his eyes and said, Fine. But you really didn't have to. After that, things were a little awkward. And Will asked me if I was okay. Yes, that moment, my heart was full of confidence. I decided it was better just to tell him. So I told him what had happened between me and Mark. He was surprised at first, but after a moment of silence, he suddenly looked at me, and he smiled, and it made me so confused. Then he said, Do you want to know a secret? Then he told me that he was the mysterious stranger that had broken the lock that day, and that the cufflink which I picked up was his. The M in this stood for his surname, Mitchell. Oh my god, I knew it! I mean, I hadn't even thought about his surname before. But it all made sense. Of course it was him. He said he'd kept it a secret because he'd learned that Naomi locked me in the room and he didn't want to cause any tension at Plutus Heights. Then he confessed that he'd had a secret crush on me ever since we watched the sunset together in a small corner in his mansion. But after that, he knew Mark liked me, so he'd kept his crush a secret and just protected me from afar. Until now, when he could finally tell me how he really felt. I can't say I was surprised. I mean, I always felt Will had feelings for me, and if I'm honest with myself, I had feelings for him too. But I hadn't even realized. After he confessed, he asked me if I wanted to date him. I didn't know what to say. I was so confused. 
We were in a romantic restaurant with a love song playing in the background. It all just felt too much. I sat there staring at him, and his eyes were so affectionate. Seeing my confusion, he just smiled and said, It's okay. Take your time. I'll wait for you. Then he took me home, and before I got out of the car, he grabbed my hand and kissed it. I quickly said goodbye to him and ran into the house. Then I lay down on my bed and thought about what Will had said, that he'd wait for me. I must have fallen asleep because the next moment I was dreaming of me and Will walking along the beach at sunset. The next morning, I woke up and I knew my answer. I texted Will and asked if he could meet me in the park near my house. As soon as I saw him, I looked in his eyes and said, Will, I've always been looking for my knight in shining armor. Now I know. It's you, and I will not miss this opportunity. He smiled brightly, hugged me tightly, and then kissed my forehead. Never had I felt so safe and warm with happiness overflowing in my heart. That's right, he was the one who saved me that day. The one who helped my family through difficult times, and also the one who has silently cared and protected me for so long. He was the guy who truly loved and cared about me. And ever since then, we've been an official couple, and I have never been happier than I am right now. I've finally found the love of my life, and life couldn't be sweeter. Thank you so much for listening to my story. Did you guess that I'd end up with Will? He was the one for me all along. It just took me some time to realize. But the best things are often the things worth waiting for. Right?